call on members order of the day number two. New Zealand International Convention Centre Act 2013 Repeal Bill, first reading. Tracy Martin. I move that the New Zealand International Convention Centre Act 2013 Repeal Bill be now read a first time. I nominate the Commerce Committee to consider the bill. Mr Speaker, this bill could possibly be the most important piece of legislation that this House has had to consider since the last Member's Bill of Mine that was in this House um, not that long ago, that I managed to convince this Parliament was in the best interest of New Zealand and New Zealanders and passed through into law. And I have high hopes, Mr Speaker, that members of this Parliament, once we have a robust debate, and I expect a robust debate, but I expect common sense to prevail, at least I hope possibly at least one member of a very, very minority party inside this parliament may allow his initial reaction to this bill, an initial reaction to this bill to prevail, to, to grab hold of his gumption, don't answer that phone, get hold and come down and cast a vote to actually see this bill go through to select committee. Go with your initial reaction, I say to that member, and he knows who he is, he knows who he is. Um, Mr Speaker, just like my last bill, this is, it's not a very substantial document. It's not hard to read. It's not difficult to understand. Um, it's in plain English, so that Mr Smith might be um, quite comfortable reading it and um, making sure that, that he doesn't have any problem with the language of it. It does a single thing. It repeals and gives this country the opportunity to go back to a fair and open and transparent discussion around the building of a convention centre in Auckland that would truly benefit New Zealand and New Zealanders. So um, that's what this bill does, Mr Speaker. It provides this parliament with an opportunity to undo an act that has been perpetrated on the New Zealand public. Um, and I'm going to be walking a very fine line, Mr Speaker, and I know I am, so I will watch you very closely. There are things around what precursed the piece of legislation that this bill seeks to repeal that, that have given some people cause to reflect, to feel somewhat uncomfortable. And so what we're seeking to do here is to repeal the New Zealand International Convention Centre Act 2013, and this would stop, this would 100% stop the current plans that are being made by Sky City to build that convention centre. And I have no doubt that members of the government will stand and go to the cost of stopping what is where the process is at at the moment. I have no doubt that that is what the government will do. But one would have to argue, Mr Speaker, is good money worth throwing after bad? Because at what we've got now is, and I would argue, that Sky City has already broken the deal that was entered into with this government that created that piece of legislation. <laughs> the arrangement that was entered into, the contract that was entered into by Sky City, has several clauses in it. And one of those clauses is around the size of the convention centre that would be built um, and the amount of money that it would be built for. Now, those things have changed, but it was on the basis of that contract that this, this, the current legislation, the Convention Centre Act 2013, was brought to this Parliament. It was brought here based on that contract and the legislation. There's no getting away from what the legislation does. The legislation provided 230 extra poking machines and an extended exclusive licence to Sky City until 2048. It guaranteed to a private business um, a protection of this parliament until 2048 around their business. And the, and the deal, the, the arrangement was based on this contract over here. And yet, the contract has not been delivered. Sky City has already broken that contract. Now, when this bill was pulled from the ballot, sir, in March, the New Zealand Herald quite quickly reported that this bill would pass if two things happened. The first was if Winston Peters won Northland. The second was if the ACT Party would support it. Well, we all know what happened in Northland. We all know what happened in Northland. The Right Honourable Winston
Austin Peters steamrolled home, overturned a massive majority by the National Party, sent a message, sent a message that one hopes regional New Zealand is watching because it has been received. So that is what happened with point number one. So we have number one lined up, sir. We have number one lined up. And we have number two. We have number two available to us. And we and it would be interesting to hear what Mr. Seymour will say with regard to this bill. And I hope, I hope, I hope that Mr. Seymour, who I I I hope that Mr. Seymour is tired also, just as Northland is, was tired of being taken for granted. I hope that Mr. Seymour is tired of being taken for granted by this government. I hope that Mr. Seymour is as tired of the National Party telling him that life is rosy and this everything will be fine if you do what we say, in the same way that they told Northland for 70 years and that ended up in nothing. I hope that Mr. Seymour is tired of being taken for granted. I hope that Mr. Seymour will cast his vote today on his gut reaction. The gut reaction that he has gone on record and had recorded, and I hope that he will do that. Um, originally, this bill was actually in response to the request by Sky City for more taxpayers' money. Um, and since then, the design has been changed, which, as I said, Mr Speaker, is one of the reasons why um, we feel that the original contract has now been breached, and therefore the repeal of this Act is quite justified. The, um, and since then, so they've, they've now made the convention centre smaller, the numbers that they say that we'll be able to bring to New Zealand has changed, although they have confirmed that no new modelling, economic modelling has been done since the 2011 report. Um, and it's a totally different convention centre from the one that they mooted in 2011 when they edged out supposedly four other bids to build the centre, winning on the basis of a promise it would cost the taxpayers nothing, but they required a change to the gambling law so that they could I don't know, get more on their investment, I gather. So we don't know what the economic modelling is of the new centre that they're now saying that they're going to build. It's 19% smaller, it's going to have smaller conventions. Um, we don't know, the cons and we also don't know if even at design stage, Sky City has to come and say to the New Zealand public, mm, sorry, can't build it for that. What happens if they get halfway through and they say, mm, sorry, mm, can't build it for that? There, we have no confidence that Sky City can actually continue to deliver even the amended criteria that they have put there. And we don't have a signed contract around that amended. The original contract and the original deal that brought in this legislation still stands. So, um, Mr Speaker, that's one of the reasons why this bill is here. To give this parliament an opportunity, let's put this deal back on the table. Let's put this deal arrangement, the possibility of a convention centre for Auckland, back out there into the public domain. Let's actually have a fair and honest process so that we can truly discuss whether that is the best thing for Auckland. Let's have a conversation about that. There's one other little point too, and it's, it's one other little point, and the point is around two pieces of an overlapping and not quite connected pieces of policy area. So um, what we have on one hand is we have Sky City with 200 and 230 more pokey machines and an extended licence protected by this parliament till 2048. On the other hand, we have Auckland City with a policy of a sinking lid on pokey machines. So we had a government that overrode the bylaws of a city, and yet everywhere outside that convention centre, there's a sinking lid on pokey machines. Nobody can replace any pokey machines in any RSA or any bar or whatever inside Auckland City. Eventually, that will provide a monopoly for Sky City. Those two pieces, independent of each other, but overlapping in reality, will create a monopoly beyond 2048 that Sky City will have, and they will have it merely because this government gave it to them. That's right. And this government gave it to them merely because one person wouldn't vote with their gut. One person wouldn't actually take his initial reaction, support legislation, that's if this gentleman, that's if this gentleman chooses to go down this pathway. So if this gentleman chooses to go down this pathway, it will be upon that basis. So, we know where the government stands, sir. We know where the government stands. There is one opportunity here for one gentleman to make a difference. 
to stand up and be counted, to say, I've had enough of being taken gr um, for granted. I will not be taken for granted again. Don't think you've got my vote just for the hell of it. I will stand up for what I believe in, and I'll allow this bill to go to select committee. Kia ora.